Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, I was gone for a while because half term and everyone decided to go out and eat in a restaurant so <laughs> I've had to work. Um, today I'm finishing off the zombie series with doing a full zombie face. Um, I'm going to be doing it with my preferred zombie bite which is gelatin but you can just switch out the zombie bite for whatever preferred method you like. Um, and I'm also going to be putting a nerny on today. If you don't know what a nerny is, it's basically like a thin layer of latex um, that I'd like paint out onto like a metal board like this um, and do a couple of layers with like a brush or I used um, a wooden spatula. Um, and I just do a couple of layers of that and then I powder it and rip holes into it onto the latex to create holes. Um, this is a really good way to mimic ripped flesh or something so like put it onto a cheek or something and add colour and it's a really good and effective way to make it look like ripped flesh and it's also very stretchy so in some movies when like they're pulling bits of flesh off their hands um, or arms or like wounds and they're ripping the flesh off they tend to use nannies for that because it gives such a good replica of skin um, so I will be doing that so because I'm doing a full face and I'm not just doing a little bite I'm going to put a headband on just to get my fringe out of the way so I'm not getting blood or anything in my hair that will be that that's for later when I've finished it. Um, so again I'm going to do the usual Pro Shield Barrier Foam all over the face just to make sure that I don't stain my face because I've got work tomorrow and it's not exactly a look I really want to be going for, you know, walking into work with blood stains and other colour stuff stuck to my face. It's not going to be good looking good when I serve people food. <laughs> um, so just wipe that all over the face. Also help even out my skin texture. Just to make it smooth and nice surface to start with. Go down the neck as well. Just anywhere that you're going to apply makeup. There we are, all done. So, what I like to do when doing gelatin bites is I sometimes like to paint out where the mop bite's going to go um, first with aqua colour because that helps lay a base pigment down as to the shape and colouring and shading into the bite so there is more depth into the bite because there will be an under layer as well as the top layer on top of the gelatin which will help add more layers so I'm going to use the Ultimate FX palette again you know the trusty one that I always use can never go wrong with and just like always IPA it I'm just going to use a mixture of dark browns and reds just to mark out the bite and I think I'm going to go on the cheek today for the bite because I've been mauled in the face by a zombie. <laughs> so you'll just want to mark out the bite mark, there we are, and just add darker shadings in as we go just to add the little teeth marks in drag them all down it will look a bit silly to begin with because it is you know you're adding bright red paint in a little 
funny teeth mark over the skin it does look a bit weird and I'm just gonna get a sponge and put some OP oil on that just to pick up some of the colour to make it a bit more faded so it's not as harsh and then I'm also going to pick up some red on the sponge and dab that all over the skin just add some irritation just to show there we are and just go back in re-highlight some of the red darker colours retrace out that bite but and I'm also just going to add a little bit of red in the middle on the brush just to add some extra irritation into the wound and I'm also now going to paint the veins onto my face like I always do only because then that sort of gets, that can also help just get the bulk of the painting out of the way one big chunk before you then have to or start to add the gelatin and build up the other colours and prosthetics so I'm just going to mix a bluey green shade using that blue and that green just to make a bluey green flesh like vein colour just to go from around the wounds um, add more greens and yellows to your look as well to the outside of your wounds instead of reds if you want it to look a bit more of an older wound because that will help show a spread of infection so if someone had been attacked there would be mud splotches and um, bruises all over the skin and you can do different stages of the bruising to show different times of infection and just create veins hold on I think my cat wants to come in lucky here she is lucky has entered the entered the room anyway you'll just want to carry on and just if the colour's too pigmented just add more IPA um, and that will um, water down the colour so it's not as pigmented I like to add the veins going up into the hairline as this just show adds continuity to the spread of the veins and just bring it up to the forehead and just do it whenever you wherever you feel the veins will spread to. I also quite like to add veins coming from the side of my mouth and just do the same again on the veins but with the red just to add different colourings to the veins so once I've done all the veins I am now going to go into and I've done all the base colouring for my bite I am now going to just add a base red wash on my other cheek or my other jawline here just to add an effect of um, soreness around the nerny also for like to also help add that base layer on for colouring of the nerny when applied 
just blend that out and just build it up as red as you want it to be. Once that built up comes there, I am now going to take some grease paints and this is a touch I quite like to use. I will colour the uns um, underneath and inside of my lips with a like greeny greyish brown just to add that like look dead and tired look to my um, zombie look. So I'll be using a brush like this. Um, I'll be using this green with a little bit of that grey and that brown just to just to make the a nice dead grey looking under eye. I might just add a little bit of red in there as well just to help with the irritation look. And the cat is back. She's probably wanting to get into my wardrobe at some point. Lucky! So I've created this sort of browny greedy shade and I'm just going to get as much product off of my brush and I'm just going to paint that under my eyes and I will use a clean brush just to blend it all out and my finger as well just to smudge it all add that tired dead look to my under eyes. You can add more greens or greys as you as much as you'd like just to give whatever sort of dead look you'd like. I quite like a browny greeny grey and the cat has come to say hello. I'll give everyone a little hello. Can you say hello, Lucky? Nah. You can't walk over here, sweetheart. Unless you want a muddy looking paw. So you walk through anyway. Of course you do. So just smudge that all out, that, and I'm also going to add some to the inside of my lips. I wouldn't suggest moisturising your lip before doing this, because having a dry look on the lips also adds to the dead look. And just paint it inside the lips just like that. So once you have your lips looking like that and everything else just blend it out all like that. What I like to do now is then move on to the gelatin bite. So again like I said with gelatin or how whatever bite you'd like, how, like I said again with the gelatin, if you do use gelatin be very careful because it can burn very easily and it could also burn and just stink out your entire house which isn't something you want either because that's really not the most pleasant of smells I can assure you. So once you've microwaved your gelatin if you are using that just give it a little stir help it cool down for a bit and then give a patch test on your arm or somewhere just to make sure it's not too hot because you don't want that to burn your face you really don't I was working from home studying uh, special effects and during lockdown and there were girls getting people getting third degree burns from gelatin so it's really not something you want to burn yourself with because you will hurt yourself quite badly so getting the trusty with your spatula again and I will just apply this to the area and create the bite marks where I've painted the indents 
paint pre-painting is also work with gelatin also really good for just creating that base mark of where you need to apply because sometimes it can be quite hard to see where you need to apply the gelatin. Now that the gelatin is all on and I like to have like a little bit of clumps in the middle just because this helps give a realistic torn look to the bite. Um, you'll just want to let this set on the skin just for a few minutes until it's cool and not as tacky as it is, was before, before powdering, otherwise you'll get all the brush stuck to the, to the bite and it will just be a very unnecessary mess. Once that's all set, just use a translucent powder again just to set the powder to not make it to the gelatin, just so it's not as tacky. Um, so I like to use the Techniques translucent powder and just pat that on. Just so the wound is nice and smooth. Now that's on, I'm going to go back in with painting again. And again, just use the IPA palette and just colour on top because I find IPA sits so much better on gelatin than grease or any other paints would sit on there so just go back in with like the dark reds and browns and maybe just a little bit of black to help add that definition sponge some colour on top as well just to drag that red veining over that red um, irritation look just all over just to blend out with the irritation around the skin that I've painted elsewhere and just colour in the groove bite marks again. Once that's all coloured in I am now going to apply the nerny. So I like to just use latex again just to stick the nerny where I want it to be stuck. So. You can use a cotton bud or whatever you'd like. I'm going to use the end of a pink makeup brush and just create an outline of latex where you want to place the nerny. Make sure you're generous with it. You don't want to have not enough latex and then it will fall off. There we are. And you can always add more on later, just to stick it down a bit more, but then just place it on and stretch it around the skin. You can also use um, a bit of prosade to stick this on if you would like, but latex also works just as well. And once it's all stuck on like that, it doesn't matter if it starts to flake off over time or anything like that because it, it it will just add to the effect of ripped, torn skin. So just go back in again with a sponge and some red alcohol paints just to add to the irritation and blend out the colouring with the rest of the paint on the skin there we are and just use the same dark browns and reds that you used on the bite just to go on the inside of the nerny just to add to the colouring build up those colours to make them nice dark and it can be a bit messy when applying this because this is torn flesh so it's not got to look perfect or neat because there's face facts, there are no zombies that I know of that are neat and tidy. <laughs> so just keep layering over those colours. Now once I've done that, I would sometimes go in with the browns again and just rip part of it and just splatter on some darker areas just to look like mud because if you're being attacked by a zombie you're hardly going to be neat and clean um, so just smudge on 
some browns and stuff, just any way you feel fit, just to make it look like you've been in a mess. You can also add bruises if you would like. Now once I've done that, what I also like to do, just to give that splattered of dirt effect, is I like to get a um, liquid eyeliner, uh, you know, like a water activated based eyeliner and a toothbrush and just flick the dirt onto my face. Now if you're going to do flicking of dirt with a toothbrush, I suggest you like test it out on your hand before going straight onto the face because it can sometimes come out in clumps, a lot a lot larger clump than you expected and then you would have ruined the look because you'll have to take off the stuff and then other layers underneath will come off. So test, off on, test out on your hand first and then apply it to your face as far away as you see fit. So I've just got this Benefit eyeliner, it's a dewy one with the, but the blacks run out so I just use the brown and just a dropper of water here so I'll just add a, de add a decent amount in because the toothbrush will soak up quite a bit and just brush the toothbrush into that there. Be careful because this can be quite m uh, messy so don't wear anything that will show up don't wear, don't wear anything white because that will just forget about it, it's ruined now that might as well just be a special effects outfit so just brush it on and as you can see it adds quite a nice stippled mud effect so just stipple that around your face concentrate have it more concentrated in areas where you've put the mud splotches just to just to highlight that muddy area and that will just it is quite a messy job but it gives a really lovely effect on um, and once you've done that if you are happy with how everything is painted and how it all looks it's my favourite time of all my favourite time for creating any zombie look time for the blood now I went for a more of a fresh irritated zombie look so I'm going to use some normal I'm going to use scratch, fresh scratch blood and um, some normal liquid blood this is just some stuff I found in Poundland or you could make your own a really good recipe for some edible um, glue is chocolate sauce and food colouring red food colouring is that like the browns and undertones and it give a really good deep blood deep red blood look um, if you follow my Instagram which I will leave a link down below with you will see the look that I did with it it was for a Dreamland music video and there was like a crack on the head with blood all on the floor and that gave a work because it was so thick as well it gave a lovely look for the blood so if you're looking for a more edible version of blood that is a perfect route to go down but again just grabbing the spatula and the fresh scratch and just adding some of that into my bite just to add some depth and more of a messy look and again you can stipple the blood around like I usually do with the bites just to add more texture or sometimes you can use an old brush and with the fresh blood that you've put on Stip all that around, although be wary because some of the fake blood like that can be quite pale, like translucent and quite bright red, which doesn't look very realistic when spread out. But when added in large quantities, it will look fine, especially upon a dark base. So I'll just add some of this fake blood and drip some of that on the face. I did a video as well for this, for a zombie look, and another good thing to um, have is some blood capsules, 
So they're just like edible capsules that um, you pop in your mouth and chew and bite on and it will build up saliva in your mouth and um, then you can spit blood or dribble it however you like. I don't like to add too much blood to my looks because I feel like the more blood you add the more of the makeup you're covering up and then it is just a big blob of fake blood and redness that it doesn't really look very real so just grabbing my stipple sponge and I'll just stipple that excess blood round the wounds round the face just to add to that bloody look and here we are zombie look is done now if you really want to be a proper zombie you can back home some of your hair and just scrunch it up and make it as much of a mess as you can if you want go the extra mile put some twigs in there <laughs> anything just to make yourself look a mess and here we are the finished zombie look i hope you enjoyed um and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!